Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome back to Dee's Yard. So I've been working on renovating the exterior of my garden shed and just recently I've been super busy with installing new garden bed that goes all the way around. So today I'd like to share with you how I did it as well as what I have done so far. The first thing I did was start edging out a new flower bed. After I lived with the shape and size for a few days, I knew I needed a larger space. So here I am re-edging to expand the bed out more. I'm completely freestyling this because I'm about to seed for grass in a few weeks. So I wasn't concerned with mapping out the area prior to edging. However, I do recommend marking out the garden bed first using either spray paint, rope, or even a garden hose before digging in turf. The only tool I'm using here is a trenching shovel, but you can use a half moon tool as well for edging. Oh, and just a tip to make this job easier is to edge after it's rained. Next, I put down a layer of compost to start waking up the soil and put a light layer of mulch on top of that to keep my dog from messing with the compost. Now, I didn't till this area or remove any grass or weeds because they are mostly annual weeds and will die from the cold over the winter and be suppressed by the mulch. Anything that comes back, I'll just pull. This is considered the no dig method, except you can use newspaper and cardboard in addition to the compost. Next, I place the plants out where I want them, taking considerations on sunlight requirements, sizing, and spacing. After I place plants, I always live with them in that space and readjust as needed before planting. Also, all of these plants I'm using are rescue plants from the clearance section at stores. I'll make sure to link the video here and also in the description box down below if you'd like to check out that plant haul. After I confirmed I'm happy with the location of the plants, I start planting. First, I pull away the mulch around the area I'm going to be digging, exposing the layer of compost. For each plant, I dig a hole about two to three times the width of the root ball and no deeper than the root ball height. I just use my trenching shovel to dig and incorporate the compost as I go. In every hole I dug, there were some existing roots I had to cut out as I went. I can usually get them out by cutting with my shovel, but for the larger roots, I use the flat side of a pickaxe. So I have very dense clay soil, so I always amend my planting hole with something called soil conditioner, which contains grounded up pine bark. I incorporate this into the soil to add organic matter and help loosen up the compacted soil. I also add a little bit of Biotone starter fertilizer to help with transplant shock and help the roots establish. You may notice that I always mount my plants up about one inch above the ground level and again that's simply because I have dense clay soil, otherwise your root ball should be level with the ground. Then I finish off by watering and mulching. When mulching, make sure nothing that came in that nursery pot is covered. Mulch should never be volcanoed up on the plant and touching the trunk. When watering initially, make sure to water the entire area thoroughly, not just the root ball. And now I'll repeat those steps for every plant.
The first one over here is an Encore Azalea. It's called Autumn Royalty. The next one over is a Camellia called Pink Stella Camellia. The Hydrangea is called Candy Apple. Behind that is a nine bark called Summer Wine. In front are three Laura Garden Phlox. And then I have three Spirea called Double Play Doozy. So on our list of many things to do, we need to replace this ramp. And I'm probably gonna end up repainting the shed again at some point. But one of the first things we did was add shutters to the window as well as the window box. I actually just removed the super tunes that were in there. I left the Diamond Frost Euphorbia and I just recently added these purple mums on either side for a little bit of fall color. I know some people think that that's not fall, but it kind of went with my purple flowers in the hanging baskets, although those are looking a little bit spent. So I intentionally left this space empty because I'm not exactly sure what I want to put there. Probably put in some perennials and some wildflowers this spring. Now these two shrubs in the front, they also were on clearance, they just weren't in the clearance video. I got them just after the fact. This one's called Strawberry Sunday and it's a hydrangea. And this one's called Early Bird Lavender, and it is a crepe myrtle, but a crepe myrtle shrub, not a tree. The next one over is called Seaside Serenade Bar Harbor. I need to remove this box and some debris. And the last one over is a Camellia Sasanqua. It's unknown, it's a mystery. So I should find out once it blooms exactly what variety it is. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this before and after of what I have so far of my garden shed. And stay tuned because there's many new garden beds coming to this yard soon. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.